Okay, uh, hello. This is going to be the start of a CAD series that I'm doing for Team 2813. And this lesson is going to go in lieu with the day two of design, that's static parts. So today we're going to be learning how to make a drivetrain frame. Just a frame, none of the other parts, so it's just a, a static part. We're not going to put any of the uh, wheels on it yet. So the first thing we're going to do is go in and create a new document. I'm going to title it Drivetrain Frame. Okay. Okay. And what you're going to want to do, uh, I'm going to select the top plane because we're going to start from a top-down uh, perspective. And what you're going to do in Onshape that's different from other CAD systems is you're going to want to model it all together in one part and just make new parts out of the same sketch. So it's just going to be one sketch for the entire drive train frame. So you're going to select top, um, and then go into new sketch right there, and then normal by pressing the N key and hide the plane. So what you're going to want to do is sketch a so center, center rectangle, just like that. And you're going to want to select your dimensions. So, just for the sake of it, it doesn't really matter right now. I'm going to make it a square drivetrain and put it at, let's say, 22 by 22. All right. So we have that. And what you want to do next is uh, offset it to the inside because... You already have the dimensions for the outside, so you want it on the inside. So you're going to double click that arrow so it goes in. And you're going to want to set that to one inch. Because remember, the tubing that we use is one inch thick and two inches tall. And it goes around the edge. So uh, now that we have that, that is our drive frame. And you wanna get, you're going to want to add some lines for the different uh, tubing portions right here, right? Because they're different pieces. So go into L, that's your line hotkey. Just make some horizontal lines. Um, so if you hold and if you click and hold, then you can do that. Still stay in the line tool without having it make a new line. And if you reference from this, then you can make a horizontal line without having to uh, give it a, a constructor. So, okay, so we have that. And now we're going to extrude it. Oh, um, I guess it's not as important for this, but it's usually good practice to uh, title your sketches. So I'm just going to sketch it as drive, I cannot type, base. So set that, and you're going to extrude. I'm going to use shift E because that's the hotkey for extrude. And you're going to want to deselect that and that and that because you only want one part, but, I mean, you want four parts, but you want them all separate, right? So, two inches is going to be your sketch. Extrude that, and you're going to go back into the drive race, edit, select this section, and then extrude a new one. Now, it's going to give you add as the default option, but you're going to want to click on new, because you want it to be a new part when you put it in your build of materials. So, set that to two inches, and then check. And we're just going to do that for every single one of them. So select, extrude, to new. Okay. And for the last one, I'm just going to go select, shift E, new, two inches. Okay. And check that. So we have our drive base. And it's four different parts, as you can see here. So uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is hollow out these pieces because we don't use <laughs> we don't use uh, solid parts for drive. Oh, I mean, they are solid, but we're not going to use like a block of metal, right? Because it's going to weigh way too much. So we're going to hollow this out and. How we used to do that was by making an offset by like 16th inches, by a 16th, 
and then uh, going through, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do it an easier way and use the shell tool. Uh, I'm not sure if you've gotten that in your tutorial up, but it's this. And you want to select the faces to remove, which is those two. As you can see, it goes right through, if you can see that. All right. And then for shell thickness, you're going to put 1 over 16. And on shape calculates that for you. It's 0 0.0625, but you know you don't need to know that. I mean, it's nice to know, but yeah. Um, you can make. I think we could have done all of them, but yeah. So you can put more shells. Um, yeah, just set it to one over sixteen, not seventeen, sixteen. And then what you can also do is shell all of them in the same uh, shell. So in the last shell, I only did one piece. But in the next one, I can do all three of these, the last one. So what I'm going to want to do is hide this part. Um, I'm trying to find. Oh, I didn't have that option right now. But, um, okay, maybe not. Uh, yeah, so we'll take this, hide, and we can take this and also hide it. And then in our next shell, uh, what's the hockey? No, there is no hockey. So we can select this. And then this, this, and this, and then and that's getting two parts shell at the same time. That's one over sixteen, right? One sixteen, and we check that it goes all the way through. Yes, yes, yes. All good. Check. And then to show the parts again, you can go. Oh, it's not giving me the eyeball, but you can just right click and then show all parts and it's back and you have your shell pieces again so that's your drive base right there so the next thing we're going to want to do is add in some holes so that you can mount different uh, parts on there and gearboxes and everything for your robot on the drive base right so the first thing you're going to want to do is do this or select a top face of the drive base and then go into a new sketch. Oh, well, what I did there was to press the S key and then it allows you to have this little set of options and then you can uh, go into a new sketch really quickly. So uh, what you're wanna, gonna wanna do is do an extrude pattern, or sorry, a, a linear pattern of uh, holes on the thing, because you don't wanna cut out every single one of these holes on here. So you can do that once you have one of these holes. Um, we're going to do it about here. And then we can dimension it. First, you dimension the size of the hole. So it's going to be, I believe, it's 0 0.191 for the rivet. Um, but that's really easily changed. And then you can dimension it. And you're going to want to dimension it center to center, or center to line. Make sure not to select the edge and go 0 0.5. And then, yeah, so you can see that it's black. It's fully defined because we went off of the vertical from here, right? Because we, when we first drew the sketch. Now, if you didn't want it to be like that, you could select this, and then there's like the little vertical, and you can delete the sketch energy. But you don't have to, because, and we're not going to, because we want it to be in that position. So um, now we're going to do our linear pattern. So we're going to select linear pattern and select the hole right here. Now, um, the, what the linear pattern does is it selects how many you want in each direction. So it's kind of like makes an array of pieces. So you can make it go in one. Uh, you can get, make it go down in a straight line by selecting only one for the x-axis. Or you can make it go in as many lines as you want. So what we're going to do is make it two because there's this piece and this piece, and they both go in the same direction. But we don't want those right next to each other. We want them, what was it, 22? So it's going to be like 20 inches apart. And you can check over here. Oh, that's like a little bit off. So I maybe it's 21. And then, yeah, so that's right on center, you see? And uh, for the Y, you can switch that over because you want it to go in that direction. So you just drag in place the arrow and then you're going to want to go so 
so it's that piece is like 20 inches long so it's like gonna be uh, 18 uh, oh and the spacing is 0 0.5 inches typically in the other direction come on on shape oh right so you're gonna want to put it negative because it's going the wrong in the opposite direction and that'll make it and oh that's not even oh right right um uh yeah not zero point yeah you want it zero point five but you also want it it's gonna be um roughly double it's gonna be double minus one so it's a twenty inch piece because you took off an inch on both sides so it's gonna be thirty nine because that's double minus one right so you can see those last holes right there and that goes to the end and on the other side it also goes to the end wonderful. So you can click to select the thing, or to finish the pattern, and you can see you have all those holes going down the end, and you didn't have to cut every single one of them. Isn't that nice? So let's do all of these in one sketch. So you can make another hole on this end. Uh, C for circle is the hotkey, um, and it's not giving me the, um, the midpoint right here, so we'll have to dimension that. So you're going to want to dimension it. I think I said 0 0.191. That's for a 1032. I'm pretty sure it's the same as the uh, as the rivet, but it, it would be pretty easily changed if we didn't do it like that. So 0 0.5 away. And then since it's not already centered at the horizontal, you can put it at another 0 0.5. That's what? That's not. So, oh, right. Aha, I made a little mistake. Um, yeah, so I dimensioned it off of the edge and not off of the center. Remember to dimension it off the center. And it's pretty easily seen because it'll be a big whopping not center. So, yeah, you can see it goes to the center right there. They're both good. The hole's in the right place. So, you're going to want to do another linear pattern. So click on the hole. And in this direction, you want two, right? And then these are uh, 21 inches apart. So you're going to put in negative 21 because it's going against the x axis. And that goes right to the center over there. And then you'll flip this over. And then uh, it's 22. So remember, it's twice the number minus one for half inch spacing. So it's going to be um, 43 instances, and then set this to negative 0.5 because it's going in the opposite direction. And it's a pretty easy fix if you don't get it right, because you can just go in there and edit it, edit it right. So you can see it's good on this side because you can see those last holes, and it's good on this side because you can see those last holes. Click to end, and we're all good. See, get your holes on all parts of the robot or of the frame and we're good to go so what we can do is just extrude from this part um, right shifty so we don't want it to go in that direction we actually want it to remove so it's gonna go right on through and then instead of blind you can do through all or you could just do a blind that goes wow that is strange um, yeah, you can just go blind, uh, maybe like two, three inches or something. Just make sure it goes all the way through. So you're going to check that, and there's an error. What? Oh, I didn't select the merge scope. So, yeah, the merge scope is um, stating which parts all of these are uh, colluding with. So when you have a part studio, it's going to have multiple parts in it, and sometimes you don't want the sketch to affect the part, a certain part. But in this case, I do want it to affect all the parts, so, oh, I didn't, okay, so you're going to select all of the parts on here, right, and then it's going to go through all of them. So you select it, and then you have that. So you're also going to want to have some holes on the side, but for that, you're going to need to decide your wheel spacing, so we're not going to do that for now, but... That's your drivetrain frame, um, and it's all in one part studio, and the, all the pieces are different parts. So uh, if you're watching this, uh, give it a try, or 
And if you hey guys, uh, the screen recorder kind of cut out there at the last second, but uh, what I was about to say is if you needed any help or had any questions about this video, then make sure to slack me or uh, ask me a question during our class or one of our classes, and I'll be happy to help with that. Uh, if you have any, uh, I guess, complaints or like uh, thoughts of improvement for the video quality, then please tell me. I'm trying to make these as easy to follow as possible. So uh, yeah, just let me know on Slack or in class, and uh, y'all have a good day.